Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about the Fall Still Life project. Our objective for this project is that you'll be creating an autumn themed still life drawing using Sharpie and colored pencils. You'll practice hatching and stippling techniques to depict a range of value as well as describe texture and detail. You'll also create a range of value using colored pencils. This project is to further practice and improve your skills of gradation and value from the value collage and line design projects we just finished. Objectives continued. It is your responsibility to create an interesting composition, first planning by creating thumbnails in your sketchbook. After colors are applied, you'll then add ink to give texture to the composition. So what are thumbnails? Thumbnails are used by artists when they want to quickly create small compositions to figure out the best view to use for their final work of art. So on the right hand side, you're going to see six different thumbnails of an artist quickly sketching um, three different objects and different viewpoints, either zooming in on the objects or zooming out, or maybe they're creating more of a vertical composition or horizontal composition. Kind of think of it as when you're taking a picture, the thumbnail is the frame of the picture. And as you're zooming in, then you're zooming in on those objects. We're gonna be doing the same thing, but drawing instead. So practicing for thumbnails. In your sketchbook today, you're gonna to go ahead and draw four thumbnails, about four by six inches. It does not have to be exact. Um, and then you'll quickly sketch different compositions in them from the still life that's in front of you. But what makes a good composition? And that's something we're going to go ahead and watch right now. So after watching that video, you guys learn more about the rules of thirds, having nothing right in the middle of the paper, nothing is hanging on the edge of the paper. Um, you want to also consider negative space, which is really important and it works to your advantage. You do not want to clutter the composition with objects. You want to leave negative space so the eye has a chance to move around. You also want to have objects coming off the paper and then coming back on the paper. This helps the eye move around. So let's go ahead and talk about this painting. What is good about it or what is bad about the composition? And how about this painting? What about this painting's composition is strong? Or what about it could be better? All right, hatching and stippling. Ink, which is Sharpie that we're gonna be using, is a versatile medium because you can shade, but you can also be very detailed and precise. Remember that you're only working with black of the ink and white of the paper. There's no mixing of gray values or gradation happening. Therefore, to show different values, you need to cluster your lines or dots closer together to get darker. And if you want a lighter value, then you need to spread out those lines or dots. Once a mark is on the paper, you cannot eliminate it. So starting light and then building up a little at a time is really important. Try to eliminate outlines. This is the same idea we talked about in the value collage. If you need to define an edge, build up the hatching and stippling first, then define the edges later with the implied line. So you're not actually outlining your shapes. You're not outlining um, any type of shadows the lines will be created when you build up the hatching or stippling. You will practice both stippling and hatching in your sketchbooks before deciding which one you want to use in your artwork. You can use both if you like, but if you choose to use one over the other, that's okay too. I'm giving you guys the option of your preference. So here's an example of stippling. Um, stippling is used to create, it's like just teeny tiny dots over and over and over again. And the more dots in an area, the darker the value will be. And then you'll see on the big pumpkin um, in the foreground, you're going to see how there's white space left on the right side of that pumpkin. And that's giving the illusion of a highlight. So it gives you an idea, especially when it comes to like texture, um, might be kind of nice for you 
if you have leaves or texture of the fabric or maybe you have like little bumps on the pumpkin themselves, if you choose to use the stippling for that, that'd be a great option. This is an example of cross hatching. And some of you did practice some of this in your, um, your value collage um, and line design project. But cross hatching is when you create lines and they go back and forth um, between either they're creating X's or they're going in one direction to create the illusion of value. Again, you'll see that the lines are more spread out where the lighter area of the pumpkin or there's a highlight and then they're brought closer together where there's going to be either a shadow or darker areas of the pumpkin. So goals for this project. Realistic rendering. Rendering means drawing. So you'll be realistically drawing um, the objects that are in front of you. You'll be using Sharpie for value and texture, showing contrast between uh, using hatching or stippling. The application of colored pencils are vibrant and realistic, and you also have a strong composition. Now keep in mind, for the application of colored pencils, I didn't go over a whole lot as to how to apply the colored pencils or how to blend them because we did learn that in the last project. So it's important to make sure that you're using more than one color, just like I showed you guys in the, the video that had the, the fake apple. Um, you wanna make sure that you're using multiple colors to create a more realistic object. So for the apple, I use red, orange, um, dark red, brown, and yellow. Um, depending on what your object's colors are, you also want to tr try to use as many colors as possible so that you're layering them so it becomes more realistic looking. Um, your steps. So you'll first create two thumbnails, quick studies of individual objects in the uh, still life using colored pencils and Sharpie in your sketchbook. So this is a good way to kind of practice maybe doing the cross hatching and doing the stippling maybe getting a feel for what colors you would need to use for that object that you're choosing to draw. Um, so again, they're quick studies. There's no right or wrong. It's more about like your warm up um, in order to feel more confident before you go into the final drawing. You'll then create four thumbnail sketches in your sketchbook to determine the placement and composition. And then when you're satisfied with what composition you wanna use, you'll go ahead and block out your drawing lightly in your pencil. Um, artists call it HP. Um, for testing purposes, you guys use it. It's called a number two pencil on your final paper that's provided in your bag. Colored pencil is added first and then a Sharpie is added last. After drawing lightly with your number or your HB pencil, um, you'll begin adding color and value with the colored pencils. Then when the colored pencil is all set and you feel like it's good to go, you'll add Sharpie to begin describing texture and detail with stippling and or hatching. And you wanna continue looking at balance of color and Sharpie. We don't wanna have um, vibrancy only happening in like a small portion of the drawing. We wanna make sure it's balanced throughout. Same with the Sharpie. We wouldn't wanna only add Sharpie to one half or one object. Um, you wanna make sure to kind of balance that as well. Keep in mind that you can always add more but if you've added too much, especially when it comes to the Sharpie, then there's no going back. So as you are working, if you need to stand up and kind of take a look at your drawing from more of a distance to make sure that you're creating a more balanced composition with the Sharpie and colored pencil, that is something that I recommend. You'll see artists, um, as they work for hours and hours, they get up, they move around, they look at their drawing from a distance so that it kind of gives you a different viewpoint and I definitely recommend you doing that as well. So our timeline, um, today is day one, so you've got the introduction. You're also gonna go ahead and do your quick two studies of individual objects. And then day two, you'll also have an opportunity for four thumbnail compositions and just kind of finalizing your composition. Um, if you need all of day two to do that, that's fine. But if you wanted to go ahead and move on to the days three through five, which would begin um, final composition drawing in pencil and then adding colored pencil, by day five, you definitely want to be finished with your colored pencil and starting to add the Sharpie um, cross hatching or stippling. 
Day six is our last day, so you're going to be finalizing your Sharpie textures and values, taking a picture of your artwork and submitting it to Google Classroom, as well as a Google Form rubric and reflection, just like you did for the line design and value collage.